tonight. Sir Gavin Williamson has resigned from the government after multiple allegations of bullying. A former civil servant claimed he told them to slit your throat and another to jump out of a window. Pressure mounted on the minister after more allegations emerged tonight when former MP Anne Milton claimed that Williamson used leverage and threats to control colleagues and instill a culture of fear in Westminster. This followed, of course, a series of expletive messages sent to the former chief whip, Wendy Morton, for which he's been reported to the parliamentary bullying watchdog. In his resignation letter this evening, Williamson said he refutes the characterization of these claims, but the allegations were becoming a distraction from the good work that this government is doing for the British people, he said. As a result, he's decided to step back from the government so that he can fully comply with the complaints procedure that is underway and clear his name of any wrongdoing. Tonight, Rishi Sunak said he's accepted the resignation with great sadness and thanked Williamson for his support and loyalty. Yeah, all five minutes of it. It can't be stressed enough, frankly, I mean, there is a political spectrum. I've always thought this, uh, where you've got the, you know, the great MPs, regardless of party, just really good operators, orators, ideologically linked to their own politics. Mm -hmm. They're over there. And at the very end, you've got those, the dead wood that are not worth even thinking about. But there's another spectrum right over there that <laughs> Gavin Williamson <laughs> sits in on his own. And it's always been, he's always been, as far as I'm concerned, uh, a, a fairly dud operator, not a great politician, particularly untrustworthy. He was fired by Theresa May, of course. He's not got a good track record. Why Rishi Sunak, particularly within all the Braverman allegations were going on, invited him back is an absolute mystery. And I know Chief Whips, when he was doing that job, you know, were meant to have a little bit of leverage on people, but there's a line and there's a, a decorum and an unwritten code of conduct. And he clearly, it seems, broke that at every level. Don't this is not a nice man, Penny. <laughs> well, it's not just about being a nice man. It, it, it's about, yet again, it's about the cabinet and it's about this government. And people will be looking at this and saying, I thought that once Rishi Sunak came here, it was all going to be a little more sorted. Yep. We'd got an adult at the top of the table. It was all going to be fine. And now we're off on... It feels like we're off down again. And there is... I mean, there, there are... There will be people who are saying, hold on a second, I mean, out of all the Cabinet, could we actually find 12 people for jury service who we actually thought were going to do a decent <laughs> job, let alone a decent job of running the country? And, and I think that's what loads of people... I think that's what a lot of people worry about, is that it feels like here we go, round and round and round again, yet another person in the door, and that, out that is the it, door. Though, isn't it? It's the, that's the thing, JJ, isn't it? It's like he was there... If, for, Rishi Sunak comes in, there was, as Penny says, this idea that this was going to be a very different kind of government. He'd had all the Johnson stuff to kind of, you know, sweep up. Great opportunity, two appointments, Suella Braverman mm. Mm. and Gavin Williamson, both of whom had been pretty much accused of the same offence, and that was yeah. being a little bit sloppy with state secrets, basically. <laughs> yeah. um, I suspect, as we all do, that the reason he Rishi took on Williamson is because of loyalty. Um, Williamson supported him throughout the leadership campaign the first time round, um, and Rishi obviously wanted to protect his mate, and they are mates, so he, that's why he kept him in, and that's why he stood by him. With Suella Braveman, again, the rumours are that they had a pact that she doesn't stand, and then he, he, oh, she backs Rishi, and then he gives her a job, gives her her old job back. Um, anyone who works in politics knows the rumours about Gavin Williamson. He is vile, mm -hmm. he is mean, and unfortunately, there's plenty of people like that in politics who treat other people like that and they get away with it time and time again. True. Clearly, this time, someone was irked um, by Williamson and they made sure he could not get... He, he could not stay in this position. But one more thing about Rishi, he's just repeating Boris Johnson. Remember, Bojo yeah, knew about Pincher, Pincher <laughs> the Pincher, Pincher by name, and he still promoted him. Well, yeah. Rishi Sunak was well aware of the rumours about Suella Braveman and about um, Gavin Williamson, and he still stood by them. I think there are a couple of issues that come to the fore here. I mean, first of all, you know you're in trouble when the Times leader says, what's the point of Gavin Williamson? <laughs> and that was what they said. And, and to be honest, he's a failed minister in defence, a failed minister in education. I've had the pleasure of interviewing on a number of occasions. <laughs> and never before have I... Look, I can disagree with people. That's fine. If somebody articulates themselves well. But if they refuse to answer a question or if they um, just go to their sort of go-to script or if they don't use any modicum of intelligence to explain what's happening and why they've taken their decisions... 
he, he seemed to be a very veneer sort of politician who had made their progress out of being um, able to either coerce or to move or to manoeuvre, as opposed to actually having, as you said, when you yeah, were talking yeah. in, you know, this intellect that everybody can respect even if you disagree with them. And I think this is a real problem when it comes back to, you're absolutely right, to question the choice of Rishi Sunak as to why was he selected? Mm. What does he know? Mm. Where are the bodies buried? <laughs> you know, these kinds of uh, almost appalling discussions about the way that politics works where... As soon as I saw those messages, and everybody goes, yeah, you know, there's a bit of this sort of... I'm sorry, but if you did that in a work environment, yeah. you would be fired. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, yeah. you cannot <clears throat> behave like that to bully, to coerce, to say that you got one over on somebody in any other sphere of a proper working environment. You know, if we're going to see politics move away from being dirty, nasty and uh, misogynistic and various other... all the things that we say are wrong with it, then when somebody's called out on something we have to have proper process to deal with it. Yeah. Does Definitely. it say more about Rishi Sunak than it does about Gavin Williamson? I, th I think it says more about the entire political system because the, Rishi wasn't the only person to have unnecessarily given him a chance. He was knighted after the education yeah. fiasco during <laughs> COVID. Like, he's, he screwed over hundreds of thousands of GCSE and A-level students. He, he sent everyone to school for, what, a few hours and then said, oh, no, it's not safe to go back to school. And he was knighted for it. I don't lay all the blame with Rishi Sunak here, but I'm sorry, Rishi. If you're going to make your first speech as Prime Minister all about honesty and integrity and this is a, a brand new change in politics, then hire that gross little man to have um, be a minister without a portfolio. He's literally, his literal job is, I have a job without a job. Do you know what I mean? His literal it, job it, is no job. It's no job. Yeah. He's, he's served That's enough great that... work if you can get it. Precisely. It's a complete... It makes a mockery of, of the entire but I find I, I think what's a shame is that in... You know, that thing about wanting to respect people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the Labour Party, Mo Molan, for example, she was Northern Ireland secretary, everybody knew that Mo's language was a bit salty. She was an absolute tough cookie. She was very hard to work for, but underneath it, people liked her. On the Tory party, Norman Tebbit back in the day, bit of a, a, a rough old character, knew how to shout from the rafters if he needed yeah. it, but people liked and respected him. Gavin Williamson had none of that. There was none of that kind of... In a wisdom, you couldn't go, well, he's a bit tough, but we quite like him. People who say, he's a bit tough, but he's... Well, I can't also, say the word. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't. No, you can't. He was Absolutely that man. You would be can't. hauled off air. Also, also, it's the arrogance with those texts, those text messages that we've now seen. It's mm. the arrogance, A, to actually do it in the first place, and then to think, yeah, I can get away with that. You know, I can get away with that. Here's text. You yeah. know, not to think, actually, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, that bullies should do it undercover, but I'm just saying... Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'll do it. Yeah, I can. I, can, I feel I can like we've got a problem with our politicians in that mm -hmm. there's, we've mm. got a lot of politicians who have a lot of ambition but not a lot of talent. And the yeah. ones who have the real talent are staying quiet on the back benches because yeah, yeah. being in the front line is horrible, horrible place to be scrutinised mm. all the time. But unfortunately, we need the good people to start coming forward. Yeah, we do.